Welcome everybody to the first official Environmental Advisory Committee meeting of this term of council for 2022-2026. My name is Catalina Blumenberg and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this meeting. Um, so before we get started with the official meeting and the confirmation of the agenda, um, I'd like to take a moment to do brief introductions of committee members um, and those joining us. Um, before we move to confirm the agenda. So I will just start, I'll call out your name just based on uh, where I see you on my Hollywood squares on Zoom. Um, <laughs> so Kathy, over to you, just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you joined the committee. Okay, uh, Kathy Coltis, my husband and I live in Westlake and uh, I've been uh, very interested in uh, environmental issues uh, for quite a number of years, and uh, considering where we live in West Lake, uh, being such a environmentally sensitive area, um, I I thought as well with my research and um, some background and just interest and commitment um, that I would be able to contribute something. I hope to uh, the Environmental Advisory Committee. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, over to you, Councillor McNaughton. Ah, I'm next. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I know most of you. My name is Kate McNaughton, and I'm ward councillor for Picton Ward, along with Bill St. Jean, who's in the picture. And uh, this is my uh, second term on the EAC as well as council, and I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to to see a lot of new faces returning, and excited to work with uh, you, Kathy and, and Paulina. It's um, it's exciting to be back together. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, and I'm on a new device, and I don't know how to mute myself yet, but I'm figuring it out. So forgive me if I suddenly just. I can we can provide you. instructions about that, Kate. Councillor Hirsch. Thank you, Catalina. Yes, I'm John Hirsch, uh, Councillor for South Marysburg on the uh, fabulous County South Shore. Um, this also will be my second term on the, uh, the EAC. Um, and many of you are along with us, which is nice to see the returnees and uh, also nice to have a couple of new faces. Kathy, that's why we chose you because uh, we thought you could contribute. So Kate and I are both on the, and the mayor on the nominating committee. So uh, it's a small club. Um, my, my environmental interest has, has been for a very long time. I also work with the, uh, as most of you probably know, with the South Shore Joint Initiative, whose mission is to, um, to uh, uh, conserve and protect the, uh, the South Shore important bird and biodiversity area in the county. And um, I look forward to working with all of you for this, uh, this term of council. Excellent, thank you. Next, Jillian. Hi everyone, it is also nice to see everyone back together and some familiar faces, which is great. Uh, my name is Jillian. I am representing from Hastings and Prince Edward Public Health. Climate change is one of my topics that I work on, um, as well as other health hazards, food safety, and safe water. So a lot of overlapping issues associated with climate change. So it's nice to get uh, what's going on in the county and stay up to date with all the information. So looking forward to another term. Thanks, Jillian. I'm lucky to have you as a technical representative. Next is Jane. Uh Hello all, uh, Jane Leslie, I was, I'm another returnee having been on the EAC before, um, which was a fascinating time. I know you're all going to, um, particularly you newcomers are gonna find it interesting how the environment percolates into so many parts of the county. Um, lots of work left to do, so I'm delighted uh, to be back. And thankfully this time, I think, you know, God willing, we won't have uh, Jillian contending with um, COVID. And so I look forward to hearing some of the health implications that uh, Hastings Prince Edward are working on in terms of climate change and looking at the implications there. 
So thank you. I also may have a barking dog in the background. So. All animals are welcome at our committee meetings. <laughs> um, Angus? Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Angus Ross, another returning member to the uh, EAC. A uh, long time uh, interest in environmental issues uh, from too many decades in the insurance industry, uh, but a particular focus on climate change and its impacts on uh, pollution and uh, contamination. And uh, looking at uh, what Jane provided from the uh, community meeting, uh, the, the comments that came out, it's clear that we have a lot of work ahead of us uh, on a number of sectors. And I know that four meetings this year isn't going to be enough. <laughs> Thank you, Angus. Uh, Councillor Sinking. I'll unmute. Th thank you, uh, Catalina. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm just here as a guest. I'm not on the Environmental Advisory <laughs> Committee. Uh, however, I do, obviously, I have, I have a great interest in, in everything that uh, uh, all of the committees do, particularly in the, in, with regards to the environment. Um, uh, just what piqued my interest most <laughs> was uh, when I was uh, referencing uh, the last minutes meetings and the the uh, I'll guess uh, it's your your note forward memo to to self uh, what an extensive list <laughs> and uh, so I know that your committee is going to have a lot to do and and yeah Angus you're right probably four meetings is not going to cover everything that uh, uh, you were forwarding on to this new committee from the uh, the, the previous term uh, I I really look forward to um, seeing some of the, some progress I know last term there was a lot there were a lot of great, great things that started to happen and, and you've got a lot of work ahead of you uh, I partially envy you but. I also don't envy the amount of work that you're facing. Um, so I, I look forward to, to seeing the, the regular reports and reading the minutes, obviously. Um, one of the things that, that, that I know all of you are aware of, there was a minor change to the terms of reference uh, that, that, that I put forward and thankfully council accepted. I look forward to, to see, hearing advice from this committee with regards to how we can economically benefit uh, in, in ways that may help us to diversify our local economy, jobs, etc. I think that was maybe a key thing that was missing, but you had a lot to do last year. I get it. So I look forward to, to uh, getting some uh, counsel, receiving some advice from this committee on how can we as a community uh, uh, benefit from, from a lot of the great changes that are happening, particularly around the green environment and the green economy. So. It's kind of where my interest is, but hey, I'm not going to hold up your meeting any longer. Thank you for, for allowing me to uh, be here as a guest. Rachel? Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm a returnee here to the committee. You're definitely going to hear sounds in my background, currently Sesame Street and possibly kid sounds. <laughs> um, I am a researcher at Queen's University. My background's in uh, biology and geography. And along with both of those fields is an obvious interest in the climate. Um, my area of expertise is kind of forest, trees, bird habitat. And I'm also an instructor in spatial analysis at Queens. And I have a general interest in uh, food and food security, which is obviously a cross-sectional uh, issue. Uh, I'm the reason we're allowed to have chickens here in the county. Um, and I look forward to continuing my work uh, with more animals, thanks. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, and Paulina? Hi, everyone. Uh, thrilled to be here today um, and to join such a great group and continue the great work you've been doing. Um, I don't know most of you, but I'm looking forward to getting to know you. Um, a little about myself, uh, I moved to the county uh, over two years ago, so I'm sure I'm newer than most of you, but I think my appreciation for it um, and the natural beauty here hopefully arrivals uh, yours. Uh, it's such a beautiful area, and I think we have a lot of work to do um, to make sure it stays beautiful and protected. Um, so I'm thrilled to be part of this committee. 
Um, I, my passion is in the environment as well. I work in sustainability management. I'm currently at St. Lawrence College in Kingston, uh, which is where I'm driving back from right now. And uh, yes, like Angus said, I think we have a lot of work to do, a lot of very important work to do. Um, I was driving home on Sunday and an otter actually crossed uh, the road in front of my car. So it just kind of reminded me of all the ecologically fragile space we're working with here not to mention the beautiful birds I get to see every day, the deer, um, and the natural environment itself. So I'm excited to be here and uh, contribute however I can. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Paulina. And final word to Mayor Ferguson. Hey, hi, everybody. Um, thanks. I'll, I'll just preface this by saying I st can't stay for the meeting. I've got another thing I have to attend to in about 15 minutes, but I did want to take the time to uh, welcome the new members, as well as the uh, the returning members to the EAC. For for those unaware, this uh, last term, um, the Environmental Advisory Committee was formed in uh, 2020. Uh, the first new advisory committee to be formed in in quite some time, and and in my view, quite quite overdue. Um, the uh, and you know the tending to the environment on a daily basis is is um, you know just in press reports that are extremely alarming. The ones that came out this week about the um, uh, you know what we must do in the immediate future to stave off uh, further degradation is really quite alarming. And this this committee I think has an opportunity to make a contribution to how we locally address some of those things. So I, I just wanted to welcome everybody. Thank you very much for your engagement and your involvement and for volunteering um, for this role, for Jane and for Angus as public members, as well as Rachel. This will be their second term, so another four years. And to Jillian and Kathy and, and Paulina and everybody else, please thank you very much for your contribution. And, and uh, I'll be joining meetings as they go along, but I can't stick around uh, this afternoon. I will say that in Councillor McNaughton and Councillor Hirsch, um, John and Kate, as they will be known around the, the, uh, the table, um, you have two very dedicated, enthusiastic, and passionate environment, I'll call them environmentalists, um, who share the concerns of, I think, the broader the community about the work that we must do. So best of luck in the, uh, the term going forward, and thank you again for your contributions. Great. Introductory words from the mayor and all committee members. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a very productive uh, term. There's lots of work to be done. So with that, could I get a motion to confirm the agenda? Seconded by Councillor McNaughton. All in favor? And that carries. I need- a bail, see ya. Bye. Any disclosures of pecuniary interest today? Seeing none, we'll move over to item number five, which is the election of a chair and vice chair. So I will open up the floor for nominations uh, for chair. Uh, Councillor Hirsch and Jane. Yes, I'd like to nominate um, Councillor McNaughton to be chair of the committee. Chair seconder. I'm seconding. Perfect. Thank you. Councillor McNaughton. <laughs> Do you accept this nomination? Excellent. Uh, before I close chair nominations, is there anybody else that would like to nominate? Anybody? Seeing none, uh, the nominations for chair will be closed. And now uh, 5.2, call for nominations of vice chair. Are there any nominations? Jane? Um, Angus did such a fabulous job last time. I was hoping we could persuade him to return as vice chair this time. 
I can feel my arm being twisted. Oh yeah, <laughs> working on the socket, you know. <laughs> Is there a second there for that nomination? Happy, excellent. Uh, Angus, do you accept this nomination for vice chair? Yes. Amazing, nominations are now closed for vice chair. So we will move to the appointment of a chair and vice chair. And just so that everyone's aware, uh, every year we do an election of chair and vice chair. So there is opportunity for others to take on that call uh, in 2024. So with that, can I get a mover and a seconder to appoint Councillor McNaughton as chair and Angus Ross as vice chair of the Environmental Advisory Committee? I'll Rachel, I see. Okay. <laughs> Jane and then Rachel Let's, seconder. Oh, okay. and a thumbs up. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, all in favor? That carries. Uh, over to you, Madam Chair. Why, thank you. And thanks, everyone. Um, and I look forward to seeing who's chair next year. Because uh, <laughs> I think everyone who wants to have a crack, having a crack would be so great. Um, so uh, can I get someone to put the minutes of the previous meeting on the floor? Mover the seconder. I'll move that. Thank you. Was that Jane? Yeah, I was moving it. Thank you. Who, who have we got as a seconder? Rachel. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Great, so on to seven. Does anyone have any announcements coming up? Rachel, you've got your thumb up. Is that for that? Never mind. Um, I was just gonna ask Albert uh, if if you would like to make any announcements about any Earth Day events coming up, you'd be more than welcome to. No pressure. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, we are still in the midst of so I guess finalizing the dates and all the finer details of uh, the Earth Day events. However, it uh, I can say it's looking to be a packed week of events. All right, uh, great. So I when should we? Them. So sort of by the end of the month, should we keep an eye out? I'm expecting there'll be some sort of uh, PSA or list, list sent out to the public at that point. Yeah. Great. That's terrific. So at any committee member who doesn't uh, who isn't already on the PSA mailing list for the county. Uh, I think Catalina could probably hook you up or you could email me and I could um, take care of that for you. Um, so on to presentations and Catalina Blumenberg, clerk of the county, uh, the floor is yours to address, um, to address the committee about everything we need to know to function as a committee. Um, Catalina, do I need to get someone to put this on the floor? Can we have the presentation and then and then do that business after the fact? Uh, certainly, through you, Madam Chair, you can just move the motion at the end of the presentation. Great. Is it okay if I share my screen? Please do. Oh, and Rachel just had a quick question. Uh, can she email? Can she email Albert to help out? If um, let's see, what was that? Albert, are there opportunities to participate? There we go. Okay, Albert's got it. Okay, fantastic. So I will share my screen. This is um, just a highlight, high level overview of the procedures and best practices for advisory boards and committees. Some of you are returning members, so this will be repeat information, uh, but there are some newbies. Um, and it's just something to go over, just a quick orientation. But of course, the clerk's office is always here uh, to help answer any questions that you may have. And if we don't have the answer, we can connect you with the right person who can answer that question. So what is an advisory committee? So it's established and mandated by council. So council decides at the beginning of their term what committees they'd like to create. Committees are part of the municipality. You are part of the team. For committees, council makes decisions, exercises power, and committees advise and recommend so that council can exercise that decision-making authority. Um, committees play an educational role and act as a public conduit to council as well. 
So you are all appointed to the Environmental Advisory Committee because you are champions of the environment and you have expertise in that area. So part of your role is also educational and to act as that point of contact for the municipality if there's any environmental questions. And ultimately, council sets the rules in almost all cases, except where it is provincially legislated. So some committees, such as the Accessibility Advisory Committee and the Built and Cultural Heritage Committee, have extra powers because they are legislated. So there is provincial legislation that states that they shall exist and they have certain powers, but the Environmental Advisory Committee, there is no piece of legislation that says a municipality needs to have an Environmental Advisory Committee. So your power comes through your terms of reference, which are approved by council. So where does authority come from in governance in Canada? It comes from the Constitution Act, which gives federal and provincial powers, and then provincial legislation, which is mandatory and permissive. You may have heard that municipalities, our level of government exists as creatures of the province. So municipalities derive all of our power through the Municipal Act, the Planning Act, and other various pieces of provincial legislation that provide the municipality the authority to function and provide services. And then as a level of government, municipalities pass bylaws and policies that are also mandatory and permissive within the realm of authority that municipalities have. So as local government, it's really important. These are the principles that um, we believe in. Uh, we're open and transparent. Um, meetings uh, of advisory board and committees and council have to be predictable with predictable subject matter. That's why a meeting agenda is so vital as well as uh, meeting minutes that outline the decisions that you made as a committee. All of our meetings are open to the public. Um, this term of council, uh, council decided to take it one step further and be even more open and transparent uh, by having our advisory board and committees live streamed, which is excellent. Um, we have fixed election dates as well. So uh, municipalities have to have an election every four years, and typically that is in October. Uh, before, it used to be that municipalities would have to have an election every two years, um, and that was mandated by the province, so now it's every four years. Municipalities also have special proceedings for property rights, and then we have to be accessible. We have to remove barriers in our community through provincial legislation to be barrier-free and accessible uh, by 2025. So the authority of advisory boards and committees, the nature is, again, um, purely advisory. You provide advice to council. So council can approve, amend, refer, or propose other resolutions to the decisions that you're making as a committee um, because council has, the, has to think about bigger picture. While you are advocating and championing causes of the environment, council then takes a wider approach to it and a wider lens. Um, beyond the terms of reference of the Environmental Advisory Committee. And advisory committees cannot reconsider, recommend, or advice, or provide advice on a matter that has been already decided by council unless directed to do so by council. So uh, with our advisory boards and committees, a lot of times staff with the CAO um, will provide, will ensure that staff are consulting with advisory committees before a decision is uh, in front of council for a decision, just so that um, we can connect with the subject matter experts, which are all of you, and get your feedback and advice before something is up for decision for council. And you see this on your agenda today. Your first item for consideration is the law naturalization bylaw, which is going to be up for council decision soon. So the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act is another piece of legislation that uh, we have to follow as a municipality and you as appointed public members. So the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act is concerned only with pecuniary interest. So that means financial or economic interest. And your pecuniary interest could either be direct or indirect. So direct would be it's your pecuniary interest or a spouse, parent, or child has a, has a pecuniary interest in the matter which is a before you for decision. Indirect um, pertains to any of the following. So it could be a pecuniary interest in a matter which um, a, local, a local board is concerned. So it could be like your employer has a conflict of interest, a pecuniary interest with that matter. Um, your, uh, it's a body to which you are a member of. So let's say you're wearing your environmental advisory committee hat today. 
but you're also a member on an, another community organization, such as um, the Chamber of Commerce or a Community uh, Business Improvement Association. So if there was a conflict because the committee was providing funds or working on a project with that board, you have to be aware of that indirect uh, pecuniary interest. So what to do if you do have a conflict of interest or if you think you have a conflict of interest? Number one, it's up to you as a committee member to ascertain whether you do have a conflict of interest. But of course, the clerk's office is there to help, help you with that and our integrity commissioner. So most of the time, if it's sort of in that gray zone, um, you're not 100% sure if you have a direct or indirect conflict of interest, our integrity commissioner is there to provide you advice on whether you do or you don't. So if you do, you file a written statement with myself or your committee clerk for the committee. You disclose that interest prior to the consideration of the matter. So um, we always have a section on every agenda that is a pecuniary interest, a conflict of interest section. Um, you don't take part in the discussion or vote on the matter. And before, during, and after the meeting, you cannot attempt to influence voting. And if a meeting is closed, you have to actually physically leave the meeting or leave the virtual meeting. However, it is not a requirement under the legislation for you to actually physically uh, or virtually leave the meeting if it's an open meeting matter. You cannot attempt to in any way to influence the decision or recommendation um, of the officer or employee of the municipality. And if you're absent from the meeting, you can disclose your conflict at the first meeting when you are present again. And then all of our declarations of pecuniary interest are posted on our website for public access. Now to the code of conduct. So that's another piece, uh, another policy that you as appointed public members on the Environmental Advisory Committee have to adhere to. So the code of conduct is established to provide standards for conduct of members uh, in the capacity of your official duties. These standards are intended to enhance the public confidence and support the county's reputation and integrity. So the code really ensures public trust and confidence in the county's decision-making uh, process and operations. And if you ensure that you're always following the code of conduct, it will protect and maintain the municipality's in integrity and fairness in decision-making, but also your integrity um, and fairness as an appointed member. So the code of conduct operates along with and as supplemental to federal and provincial legislation that governs the conduct of members of council. So the principles of the code are all decision making is done in an open, accessible um, and equitable manner that respects the county's governance structure. Your appointed membership is not to be used for personal financial gain or benefit. County residents should have confidence in the integrity of their local government and of their members. And the conduct of each member demonstrates fairness, respect for differences, and a duty to work with other members together for the common good. So if you've seen, there's a link um, to this presentation to the code of conduct, but there's different sections in the code of conduct. There's general integrity sec section, confidentiality of information section. Um, it's especially important for closed meetings or information like, let's say we are providing you with information that hasn't been made public via email to the committee for whatever reason, it's really important that you keep the confidentiality of that information and anything that is confidential would always have a confidential uh, in the line item. And again, reinforcing the message if it is confidential to make sure that no incidents happen that you share information that you shouldn't. Improper use of influence section. There's also a section um, about respecting staff. So in the way that you as committee members and us as staff work together, uh, just to make sure we're on the same page and that we're always being respectful of each other and the different roles that we play. Because as staff, we are providing you with our expert advice, um, but you as committee members um, appointed by council have a right to maybe amend um, any of the recommendations we put forward in, in our reports or give feedback that maybe doesn't necessarily align with the initial advice that staff is giving you. But it's important that when we have those discussions that that, that dialogue that ends up being better, better outcomes, we do that in a respectful manner. The use of municipal property, it talks about um, how we use municipal property when we have meetings in public spaces, et cetera, and then gives benefits and hospitality. 
Women's Board and Committee process. So before 2020, uh, some of the committees were not under the uh, administration of the clerk's office. They were led by the subject matter experts. So um, Environmental Advisory Committee, well, it was under clerk's office, but Agriculture Advisory Committee, for example, was under planning. So planning would support it with the agendas and the minutes and uh, the administration of the committee. But uh, since 2020, COVID gave the municipality that window of opportunity to bring those, um, the committees to the clerk's office to uh, provide that administrative support. But then all of the county as a whole, all staff support the work of different committees as a whole, depending on the subject matter that's up for uh, an agenda topic. So how we make sure that all of our committees are standard, uh, standardized and equitable is the procedural bylaw. So the procedural bylaw governs the way committees are run. It includes rules of how meetings are called, who's involved, where they happen and how they proceed. It also guides how residents interact with council and committees and the way the municipality communicates about meetings. And the procedure bylaw outlines a fair and consistent approach with respect to consideration of county business and establish, and it also establishes standards in relation to notice provisions, agendas and minutes, resolutions and voting. So how you vote, how you bring ideas forward, they have to be brought forward uh, through motions, um, the council committee structure and membership appointment. So the procedural bylaw is our governance document for the municipality. So the purpose of one is to maintain transparency and accountability of council and committee decisions. If we follow our procedural bylaw, um, we're also promoting public input and awareness of committee and council decisions. It improves the effectiveness of council meetings and the clerk's office as a whole. It ensures accessibility issues are considered within council procedure. Um, the way the bylaw is written is inclusive of all persons and it accurately reflects the requirements of provincial and municipal law. So the procedural bylaw outlines um, when agendas are published, how minutes are available. Uh, it talks about how uh, members of the public have to contact the clerk's office and what, what timeline to be able to be, to uh, be a deputation at an environmental advisory committee. So it just really ensures that uh, we're transparent and accountable in the way that you make decisions. So hyperlink to this presentation is also a quick reference guide on the procedural bylaw. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, it, it's really great because it talks about um, the different types of motions that we have. Um, and of course, just uh, how to talk at meetings. Sometimes there's procedure like through the chair or it just talks about, it's a quick reference guide and, and I really encourage you to take a look at it. So all meetings are open to the public and public attendance is welcomed and encouraged. Um, now all of our advisory committee meetings are streamed on YouTube. Um, agendas are published three working days in advance of a regular meeting date and all minutes are approved at the next scheduled regular meeting of the committee. So the big no-no that meetings are offensive and unparliamentary language, deviating from the subject matter being discussed, Criticizing decisions of council, you know, you can be constructive about certain decisions, but it's important to, again, just do that in the right manner. It, you should not disobey the rules of the procedure or bylaw or disobey the rules of the chair when chairing the meeting. Again, disclosing confidential information or displaying offensive or partisan uh, material at meetings is not allowed. So quickly, just a couple tips on your role as committee members, familiarize yourself with the terms of reference, understand your relationship to council, actively participate in discussion and decision-making, review the agenda and materials before our meeting, undertake the work assigned by council or the CAO, operate under our county bylaws and policies, be open-minded and professional, ask questions and seek clarification, exude respect, and understand how the municipal code of conduct and the conflict of interest applies to you. And if you have any questions about this or any clarification, please feel free to reach out to myself or, or anyone from my team. So before a meeting, advise the council and committee coordinator if you're not able to make it, review the agenda uh, and come prepared with questions. During a meeting, you should actively participate, vote on motions and the way we vote on motions is with a hand up 
we never vote in secret or by um, like a secret ballot or uh, ranked ballot, nothing like that. It's always just a hand up. Ask questions of staff or other members, maintain decorum and respect, and then follow the chair's rulings. And then after a meeting, review minutes from the previous meeting, follow direction from counselor or the CAO, and take action on any work assigned. So the role um, of staff is uh, to work with uh, the council and committee coordinator on agenda items. So this is like Albert or Adam, um, ensure all action items go through the council committee coordinator, attend meetings to answer questions, uh, staff should not commit to work to complete work that has not been approved by council. Take the time to gather information, advise committee when there is a need to bring information back to a future meeting, and we as staff cannot participate in any voting. So the role of the council and committee coordinator, um, me for this meeting, is to provide administrative support. We prepare the agendas, manage the meetings, and prepare the minutes. We track agenda items. We're also mindful of recommendations proposed by the committee that they don't contradict any county bylaws, policies, or procedure. We help to reinforce the relationship between the board and committee and council, and your uh, counselors do that as well. Councillor Hirsch and Councillor McNaughton also um, are able to uh, reinforce that relationship and they can communicate and are the champions of the Environmental Advisory Committee on Council. We as staff and um, from the clerk's office and also your appointed counselors are liaise between uh, staff, the board, committee, and council and ensure members are aware of council issues that may affect the goals and objectives of the advisory committee, including past actions of council. If you ever have to resign from the committee for any reason, please make sure that your resignation is in writing and received by the clerk's office. And then the way that appointment happens is we recruit for all voting members for all advisory boards and committees uh, through the clerk's office. And they're all, all opportunities are publicly posted on our website in the newspapers and um, we have to make sure that that is done equitably. Uh, once a recruitment drive is completed, the nominating committee meets to review and make re recommendations to council. And then those recommendations from the nominating committee, which is made up of six members of council, are taken to council who ultimately makes the final appointments of the committee members, of those voting members. Meeting schedule, uh, Angus alluded to it. Uh, under your terms of reference, you <laughs> are only able, to, you only have to meet four times, but of course, as meetings and projects get started, uh, that can always, um, we can always have monthly meetings um, or as many meetings as, as you need as a committee. And then my office with the chair uh, work to schedule those. So best practices and takeaways quickly, uh, we start all meetings as soon after schedule time, as soon as quorum is achieved. Quorum is under a procedural bylaw, you have to have quorum. So 50% plus one, so of the members present to be able to make decisions. So that's a majority of the uh, committee members. So that's just to make sure that any decisions you make are with the majority. Avoid adding items at the meeting. So, you know, you have a really good idea to talk about a project please don't add that item um, when the agenda has already been prepared and published. Just make sure you talk to the chair and the clerk's office to add that item to your next feasible meeting. We just wanna make sure that we're transparent um, and we don't add anything last minute because staff could be unprepared to talk about it. Um, the public may have an interest in that topic too. So we wanna make sure we're communicating whatever that idea is on the next possible agenda instead of just adding it um, unexpectedly. Um, you can't exceed the boundaries of your terms of reference. Um, please take time to learn about the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act and how it impacts you. Um, the chair is really that like the conductor of the or orchestra, not the lead musician. So the chair really has to ensure that everyone who has their hand up is able to provide their input um, and just that it's done in a way that everybody feels heard and that they uh, were able to get their point across. You should be prepared for each meeting, read the municipal procedural bylaw and ask appropriate senior, senior staff when in doubt about procedures. And I believe that's it for the presentation. I'm sorry, that was very long, um, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Catalina. That was an excellent primer for, uh, for this new 
um, reconstituted environmental advisory committee. So does anyone want to ask any questions at this time or would anyone like clarification or does anyone have any concerns? I'm seeing none. So the people participating from the phone, Paulina, if at any time you want to pipe up because you're driving, please don't think that you have to signal somehow and just call out and we'll accommodate you so that you don't okay, uh, you. look at your phone and get in an accident. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, how's your drive going, by the way? Oh, it's good. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just got off the 401. So, uh, oh. Almost home. Almost home, yeah. Almost home. So um, going forward, uh, our outgoing, our, our former chair, Jane, became quite a master of how the Environmental Advisory Committee uh, meetings could be optimized. If anyone has questions about procedure, of course, call the clerk or her staff. But if you have additional um, questions or concerns, please reach out to John or myself, like Catalina highlighted, or I would, I would lump Jane in there too. And I think she'd be willing to too. she's uh, become an expert at how, how this committee, um, how this committee works and how we can all move forward together. Jane. Yeah, I just, um, there was a reference to advising um, the chair, if you're not going to be there. Um, and we had run into a couple, a couple of issues the last time with the committee where people would not turn up to meetings and we were really borderline with chair uh, or rather with quorum. So I just wanted to emphasize how important that is if you can't be at a meeting because, and that the chair is prepared because you can send the whole meeting out the door. So quite literally. <laughs> So, and if anyone needs additional, you know, if anyone is not able to use calendar reminders, because the clerk will send out a calendar reminder that you can accept and have on your own calendar. If that's not something that you do do and you would like a reminder, otherwise, I'm sure we can do something um, in that regard to support that with, a, with an email um, an hour before or something like that. Happy to oblige, particularly for people who are being pulled whose time is being pulled in many directions. Um, so uh, thank you again, Catalina. That was excellent. Can I have a mover and a seconder to receive the presentation? Thanks, Jane. Seconded by Angus. Thirded by Rachel. <laughs> and we'll move on to, uh, we don't have any deputations today. This is normally the spot where we would hear those for um, the drivers and the new kids on the block. Uh, and we don't, uh, this is, so do we have a comment from the audience? We've actually got Phil here and he's, he was, it was wonderful to have him in introductions. I, if you wanna make a further comment now, um, please feel free. I mean, I loved your first comment. That was good. Okay, not hearing anything from Phil, so we can move on, I think, unless I'm missing someone. Uh, so let's move on to items for consideration. So uh, to Paulina and Kathy, you did hear, uh, you got to meet Albert very briefly when I put him on the spot rudely at announcements. <laughs> so let's put him on the spot again. You're probably going to see him a lot. We, he's a, a frequent flyer <laughs> at the EAC, and he's always welcome to our meetings, and as is his boss, Director Adam Goheen, who's in the room, and if he feels like saying hello at any, at any point, please, please, you know, uh, come on camera and say hello, and um, uh, we'll be seeing, I'm sure, plenty of Adam as well. So welcome, Ab. Adam and welcome Albert. Albert, we're I think really looking forward to your report. And this is a long time coming and I'll let you provide the explanation and the details. Welcome back, Albert. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and first off, allow me to uh, wish you a uh, congratulations on the appointment as well as uh, congratulations to Angus. 
looking forward to working with both of you uh, going forward. So I'll, I'll get right into it. I figured um, it would be a good idea to provide a little bit of background on uh, the consultation that's occurring at the moment. So this consultation is uh, regarding naturalization and uh, no mo may. Um, the history of this for those new members on the uh, committee comes back from a meeting uh, of the EAC in October, I believe of 2021. And out of that meeting came some recommendations um, for staff to prepare a report on naturalization as well as no mo may. <clears throat> and this included a review of uh, the existing bylaws that we have in place in the county, as well as uh, comparisons with our municipal comparators, uh, and also a, a look at some of the um, recent legal challenges that have come against some of uh, the prosecutions under various municipal bylaws. Um, so that, that report was provided on May 3rd of 2022 and went to um, council shortly after. Council uh, ratified the recommendations in that report uh, that came as, a, I guess, the minutes of the EAC. <clears throat> The recommendations uh, sparked us to start a consultation with the public. Um, the consultation has, uh, and it was initiated on the 17th, so that would have been last Friday, and will uh, proceed until the 31st of this month, whereas we will uh, take the results of that to consultation, um, reduce it into a report, and uh, likely, possibly, I should say, conduct some updates to a draft bylaw that was prepared uh, as part of the uh, consultation and come back to uh, council on April 13th, I believe. And so we will uh, present the results at that point in time. And uh, I believe afterwards it will be sent to, uh, sorry, I should say committee of the whole on the 13th and council on the 25th. That is a snapshot of, uh, of what we've done here. Um, the consultation itself, focuses on looking at the existing bylaw, what's missing uh, or what is overly restrictive of that bylaw. <clears throat> it also includes a list of local weeds that have been designated or proposed, I should say, uh, in conjunction, uh, a consultation with the EAC and Natural Cover Working Group. And that uh, local list would be a new addition um, to the grass and weeds bylaw in addition to what's already there. Um, those weeds are specifically invasive species and not necessarily noxious, um, but uh, invasive all the same and of special concern. Uh, beyond that, the consultation also asks uh, the public to weigh in on Nomo May and whether or not they would prefer to see it, if they think it's a viable um, option for public or private property, or perhaps not, or, you know, or maybe they perhaps feel that a pilot project would be more appropriate. So it's trying to gauge the public and how they feel about that option. And uh, again, results of that will be presented with the report. And I hope to have uh, lots of exciting news on the 13th. Thank you, Albert. Jane, you've already got a question ready. Yeah, I, I just, um, Albert, I remember that at one of the last meetings of the last Agricultural Advisory Committee, that they were actually seeking some support and had interest on some of the invasive species that the agricultural community has been contending with it wet as well. And I just um, wanted to find out, you know, if the degree to which you've been able to get some help, I realized that the timing would have been bad because the committees all stopped existing, I think right after that, but to, to get some input from the agricultural community on these issues that they're contending with too. Um, through you, Madam Chair, I understand that uh, a lot of the issues that they're having are, are with respect to existing noxious weeds that are regulated under the uh, Weed Control Act. Um, that is accounted for within the proposed bylaw that we put forth as part of the consultation. Um, there's been no direct consultation with the Ag uh, Committee um, that was a recommendation, recommendation, uh, but was removed um, by council. So we, we have not pursued that um, in keeping with in honoring council's wishes. Uh, however, I think that um, through consultation with the EAC and the National Health and Working Group, a lot of those concerns may have been addressed uh, in the list that was prepared. Thank you. Um, do we have? <clears throat> We do have another question or comment, John. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thanks, Albert. I think it's worth uh, everybody 
uh, understanding because there's there's just one little provision in the in the draft bylaw that this applies at the present time at least only to built up areas. So it's not like um, vast rural properties and stuff. That's that's out of bounds. So, um, but Albert, a question. Um, I recall a couple of years ago as we were discussing this at the EAC, um, somebody quite a candid comment from a member of staff, I think it was somebody from bylaw, indicated that there are at least at least a half a dozen property owners in the county who take advantage of the way our bylaws work to have the county do their their um their grass cutting for them. Uh, they find it um they find it uh cost beneficial to have us do the work and and build them rather than hire somebody else. So um obviously we shouldn't be in that business. But that is indeed the in this draft bylaw, which, by the way, I've, I've read it and I think it's I think it's great. Um, there is a provision, of course, that if somebody uh, you know fails to maintain the property properly, we will come in and do the, the mediation and send them the bill. Um, do we have any idea what, this, what the size of those bills will be, so that we can avoid becoming a, a lawn maintenance service for uh, for residents? <laughs> Um, thank you, uh, John, and through you, Madam Chair. Um, I wouldn't don't offhand... Don't worry no. about saying through. We know it's... Go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, trying to be formal. So, uh, yes, so I wouldn't be able to speak to a specifics of cost because that would obviously vary depending on the size of the property and the nature of the, the uh, cutting that would be required. I can say that the bylaw folks were consulted as part of the development of this bylaw. Um, so the enforcement piece came from their, their camp. So I, I believe that what is in there is reasonable uh, from their perspective and they, they feel would be enforceable. Um, now, with respect to people taking advantage, I think the way the bylaw is worded is that uh, it's a complaint driven system. Um, so I'm not certain that there'd be any consistency uh, to that so that their property would be maintained um, you know, regularly, so to speak, unless there were complaints regularly. So um, just just regarding that, uh, that question, having had some extensive discussions with bylaw enforcement on the matter at that time, so going back in time, it was a base rate of $500. So if we're looking at a quarter mowing a quarter acre, it's actually fairly cost prohibitive. There were a few property owners. I believe there were nine repeat offenders, if memory serves, and don't trust my memory at this point because it's holding a little too much, but I believe it was nine repeat offenders who uh, from time to time have said, yeah, whatever, go ahead and do it. But because the fine is so steep, the county is able to recoup their total costs plus to ensure that it's not, that it is going to be cost prohibitive. Albert, and then Rachel, uh -huh. I see your hand, Rachel. Sorry to cut the line. Um, I understand that the work is conducted by contractors so it that is. this wouldn't be something that would be detracting from the county's staff or ability uh, with respect to, let's say, the roads or parks or anyone there who might be cutting grass. Yes, uh, Rachel. Yeah, I have a question. I read through the draft bylaw and my understanding of it is if somebody complains, an officer is gonna come and look at it and might give you an order to comply. Um, but I didn't see a mechanism in there for anyone to, um, I don't know, decide that they're actively not going to comply with it and are going to protest that order to comply. Um, so I think that there is space for that. So a lack of ability to appeal is what you're talking about? Exactly, yes, because the way it reads right now is if the bylaw officer comes and says, yes, you need to do this, then you have 72 hours to do this. And if you fundamentally disagree that you deserve to, you know, be ordered to comply, there should be a mechanism to appeal that exactly. Albert, would you like to, um, do you have a comment regarding the lack of appealability? I can um, weigh in on this. Uh, so there is a limitation on the size of a uh, grass that is allowed. So 20 centimeters is the, uh, is the set um, limit that is in the 
existing as well as the proposed bylaw. Um, so I think in those cases, it's pretty clear cut whether or not a cut is required. Um, now, it's my understanding that staff is are not intended to be draconian in any way for this, and it is a complaint-based system. Um, so I, I think there's there's leeway in there. There's there's room to uh, to be reasonable. Uh, I don't think folks are getting out with <laughs> measuring tapes and and you know checking someone off if they got five centimeters more than they should. Um, but I don't believe that having an appeal system in there. And this is this is what was explained to me anyways uh, from bylaw. Um, the appeal system would just could potentially draw this out for an extended period of time and you'd end up with a much more severe issue later on, making it even difficult to, to remedy later. So it's the sort of thing where this, this does need to really be addressed uh, if it's become a concern. Um, otherwise, it'll be difficult to, to do. It'll be difficult to find a contractor who wants to mow a hayfield. Rachel, do you want to continue or...? or? Yes, I have a follow-up question. Um, why is it 20 centimeters? Is there a biological reason? That is a good question. Um, this is something that's been carried forward from the previous bylaw, as well as consistent with many other bylaws across the, uh, the province um, for specifics into whether or not there's biological advantage to having it a certain height uh, that I'd have to get back to you on. Um, I can say that that only applies in the proposed bylaw, I should say, only applies to turf grasses. So, thank you. Uh, so Rachel, one of the things we did discuss in uh, last year was the uh, desirability of rolling many of the um, principles at play in the current draft bylaw into the property standards bylaw, which has an appeal process. So if some of the um, some of the uh, information that's in this current bylaw and some of the encouragement that's in this current bylaw was rolled into the property standards bylaw, there, there would be more room to appeal. There is, however, still potentially uh, a need for a grass and weeds bylaw in case there, uh, there is an immediate need to deal with hazards like um, uh, noxious weeds that are about to go to seed, or in fact, uh, the height of grasses. Oh, there are teenagers walking into my house as we speak. Hi, guys. I'm in a meeting. So, <laughs> welcome to my home. There'll be cats and children. Um, <laughs> the uh, the uh, the lack of appeal in case there's a safety concern. For example, an obstructed uh, driveway. So your grasses are tall enough that they're uh, obstructing your neighbor's driveway. Or, or something to that effect, something that's not purely cosmetic is I think what's intended to be addressed here. But perhaps as a, as a committee, Rachel, we can discuss what you've brought up and look and see if there is, um, and see if there is a way to handle that uh, or to ensure that it is productive and fair. Um, so, and your if your hand was up on purpose, go ahead and take the floor. It was it, a thumbs up. <laughs> oh, okay. No, and we can actually discuss that and and prepare notes to if if the committee agrees and prepare notes to submit back to staff um, with those recommendations or to look at how to make those recommendations. So, Rachel, if that's something that you do want to move, we can discuss that further. Um, someone else had their Thank hand you. up, John. Yeah, just in a similar uh, note, Rachel's right. We there needs to be some kind of, you know, appeal or discussion process, and maybe that will come through the property standards bylaw. I think more commonly we're going to be faced with an issue that's going to be difficult for the bylaw guys to deal with, and that is sort of how much Canada thistle is too much. You know, if I have a big property and there's one Canada thistle on it, does that constitute an infraction, or you know, one one um, um, buck, buckthorn shrub. Um, and I'm sure the bylaw guys are going to have to learn some, you know, figure out some discretion as we go through this. It'll be a learning experience. But I think that's probably where we're going to get more more um, interest is not in the length of grass, but in how, how, many, how many weeds or too many weeds for, for purposes of this. 
Adam, is there going to be some ed supportive education for staff or a cheat guide that they can reference with photographs, et cetera? This is something that we've discussed in the past, having available online uh, within easy reach on our sustainability hub. Is that something that um, has been discussed further? Uh, um, or sorry, Adam, I meant Albert. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Albert. <laughs> no, you know, it's the alliterative nature. Uh, yeah, so I think there needs to be, for one, there'll need to be some internal uh, training as we approach this and as this bylaw will be adopted. There will definitely be some discussions about uh, how it will be applied and uh, perhaps that's a procedural um, discussion that, that could uh, address some of these concerns. Um, with respect to updating the website on a uh, cheat guide on what these invasive species look like, um, we currently do have some invasive species information on our website. However, um, you know, it's, it's a great idea to consider having a page dedicated just to this, which I would envision would happen once this is approved, if it is approved, um, which could then identify these issues to people and, um, you know, give them uh, an idea of, of what to do with this or how to identify these things. Thank you, Jane. Albert, is there any room? I mean, presuming we're able to get our natural cover group reconstituted, I'm wondering if they could provide some help in the training of staff because we've got a lot of people in there you know, who are biologists, ecologists with a good foundation and they might be able to, to you know, flesh out some of the whys and wherefores um, you know, and provide some additional context. For in the process of training staff? Uh, I mean, perhaps, um, you know, I think this that's down the road quite a ways from where we are now. I think the first step is to uh, see that this, uh, see what happens with this when it goes to council mm -hmm. um, and cross that path and we uh, cross the bridge when we get to it, I guess. Rachel. I know that noxious weeds are one thing and invasive weeds are another thing, but I just wanted to make sure that there is a distinction because the thinking on invasive weeds is changing. For instance, in Toronto last year, last summer, uh, there was a removal of a number of Manitoba maples and Norway maples along a ravine and there was problems then with the ecological functioning of the ravine. Uh, so I think that perhaps, you know, yes, noxious weeds, we don't want them. But we also have to consider that in the context of ecological functioning, some of these invasive species are actually quite important. Right. Albert, do you want to comment on that? Sure, sure, absolutely. So um, the bylaw, draft bylaw, as it's written, uh, treats them as two separate things. Uh, we have the noxious weeds that are identified by the Weed Control Act, and then you have the local weeds, which could, um, it's basically uh, an acronym or, or sorry, a, a, uh, another word for saying, uh, invasives. Uh, so that's how they're kind of split apart. Um, with respect to removal of some of these things, the bylaw only focuses on overgrown areas like lawns and such, um, where they may not have as much a, of an ecological impact to remove in those cases. With respect to, say, a Manitoba maple, that's not being considered as part of one of the local weeds and is still considered a tree under our existing tree policy and, and, and bylaw, or policy, I should say, not bylaw. Um, so I can say from a functional standpoint, if we're removing a Manitoba maple that's greater than 10 centimeters and meets the definition of a tree in our, in our policy, then it's getting replanted as uh, under uh, county power. Angus, did you have your hand up for a second there? Yes, um, I have a very quick question. It's to do with uh, the charging uh, of the costs to someone where the county has contracted out and the, somebody else comes in and, uh, and cuts. Um, do, does the county uh, just charge the individual what they're charged by the contractor or do you build in some additional cost for the uh, time spent by bylaw to go out and check uh, the time taken to organize the, uh, the contractor, um, because otherwise, you know, they're getting a, a grass cutting um, and not having had to work for it at all. Go ahead. Um, my understanding is that uh, that rate 
does account for costs to the county. I, I don't believe it's shortchanging the county. I would uh, want to confirm that, though, however, with bylaw, they're the ones who would set the fees um, for that. So um, I could get back to you if, if preferred. Okay, thank you. So it, it was under the last bylaw, I believe that's what um, was confirmed at when um, Andy joined us at our meeting last year. So however, going forward, I think also taking that as advice to uh, Albert, that that is, that as a practice is continued is desirable. Um, I, I think no matter what he discovers, I think sort of taking forward a cost recovery approach would be highly desirable. Uh, I think, I think, would the committee agree generally with just with nods, not with a vote that that is indeed the direction that should be undertaken? Yes. So, um, would anyone have any further comments or questions for Albert or discussion that they would like to um, bring forward to the committee regarding the grass and weeds bylaw consultation? No, um, I yes, I have a question. Sorry, yes, Paulina, go yes. ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a quick question. I was wondering, uh, and forgive me for not knowing too much about uh, what the committee's done in the past, is there any work being done to educate landowners about replacing their grass with something else. So I know we mentioned no mow may, but is there any kind of initiative to eliminate mowing altogether and talk talking about how grass really isn't ecologically valuable, how other plants yes. could Excellent question. So um, just before I turn it over to Albert, later on in our on our agenda, we're going to be discussing the Natural Cover Working Group and some of their efforts. But I think one of the hopes with this bylaw, and Albert will speak to it in a moment, is that it's going to be encouraging to people to go out and rip up their lawn and plant something that's beautiful and wonderful. But I'll, I'll throw it over to Albert. Uh, thank you. Uh, I've actually already had requests as part of this consultation uh, whether or not they could people can proceed with uh, ripping up their lawns to do uh, <laughs> to do different alternatives. So there's the desire there, um, at least in, in some respect. Um, I think this harkens back to what when we were talking about the sustainability hub and putting more information out to the public. I think again, step one is to see that this goes to council and council has a final say on uh, what actually occurs. And if it does indeed get passed, at that point in time, we would look to provide some support, uh, in supporting information, again, through a page on the Sustainability Hub or, or some other mechanism to provide people with information on, um, on how to do this or you know, what the alternatives might be. Um, and Paulina, just uh, just so you know, the nat the outgoing natural cover working group uh, was really interested uh, in seeing their next incarnation undertake public workshops to that effect. And yeah. um, if we can at some point sort of um, solidify a communications program, we could probably also look to produce some how to videos with with the assistance of members of the public. So there's certainly a, a lot of interest in that area. It's very exciting to hear you bring it up. Um, any further hey, comments yeah, and questions? Sorry to jump the gun. <laughs> What's that? And sorry to jump the gun if it's coming up. Don't jump the gun, don't be sorry. No, 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 this is a, the perfect time to mention it. And um, it's uh, like I said, it's exciting to hear you bring it up. There's lots of interest and I think um, the more that we can do as a committee to support that interest, the better. So thank you for bringing it up. Um, further comments and questions? So uh, as committee members, make sure that you've had a chance to look at the consultation page and fill it out if you so desire. Can I get a mover and a seconder to receive the report from Albert Pashkoviak? John and Kathy, thank you. And so many hands went up, that's great. So all in favor? Great, thank you so much, Albert, and thank you for joining us again. So, uh, and we look forward to seeing you 
many, many times throughout the next four years. So um, thanks for having me. Anytime. Uh, I think we should just, you know, start letting you vote. So uh, on to 11.2. And I think this is going to be a big one, memo to file. Um, so uh, the memo to file. <laughs> Here's where we get into a nice big conversation. Uh, does anyone, so we're gonna be discussing uh, what we have here, but uh, on this memo to file from the last committee, but we're a new committee now, even though there are lots of returning members, we've got two new bodies mm -hmm. and, and all of their ideas. And we've got Jillian back and uh, we'll have, um, and, there might be new priorities to add to this list or priorities that have been checked off that we can strike from the list. Do people want to start? Um, does anyone want to start this discussion? Or would you like to ask questions or receive clarifications, new members or returning members? Okay. So, um, would people be interested? So this motion is uh, includes a request for council approval to undertake some planning uh, activities so that we can sort of iron out a work plan for uh, for the next couple of years. Is that something that the committee is interested in? Uh, are there ideas that people would like to see are sort of put into action for a meeting like that? Do people have suggestions or preferences? Um, now's your time. John. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I think that strategic planning session is, is essential. Um, as I look at our memo to, uh, to ourselves, uh, again, I don't see anything I would take off, and indeed there might be, you know, some things to add. I think it's important to consider uh, uh, later in this agenda, we're going to hopefully reestablish the Natural Cover Working Group, but there are other working groups that we should probably establish, and we need to look at that through a strategic planning process, like a planning group and, and so on, uh, perhaps a climate group and whatever. So... Perhaps the way to deal with this memo, which is a great one, is to really forward it to that strategy session. And uh, we're hoping, I guess, to get some county support, right? He says, looking at Catalina, um, <laughs> um, to, to do that facilitation. Because that, that could help us set up a, a, a really work plan for the next several years, certainly for the next year anyway. And um, that's what I would think would be the, the way to go. Catalina? Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Is there any outcomes that you'd like from the strategic planning session or anything that you can do in advance to prepare? I just want to make sure that whatever staff is assigned this has that background and that context. Um, if you have that, if you want to talk about that as a group before we move on to the next discussion. So, um, and I would start with, we we need to be doing some preliminary investigations. Last year, for those who don't know, we had a very successful um, climate event that, that members of the committee um, did independent of the municipality, but with the support of council and uh, with some funds through an old environmental advisory committee reserve. Uh, and we would need to do some preliminary legwork to to discover what how uh, what the timeline could be moving forward for this year and what that might entail and who that might involve. And that would require, I think, reporting back uh, at that time. Is that something? Uh, so that is one thing that that we should probably clear up right now if there's interest amongst the committee to move forward with, with some preliminary investigations in that regard. Um, and I'm seeing lots of heads nodding and I'm seeing some thumbs up. It's not, it's not, a, it's just sort of a, 
a gentle straw poll and not an actual vote, but I see enough heads nodding that that is something that will add to the list. So we would need perhaps a, a volunteer or two to go and do those preliminary investigations. Um, Angus, I'm looking at you. And um, <laughs> is that something that uh, just informally um, yeah, um, you'd be willing to work on perhaps with yes. some help from um, from either Jane or myself, if anyone else. Oh, and Jane, you've got your hand up. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, oh, no, you're I was, no, I was just saying, yeah, I was just going to say I'll partner up with Angus. Terrific. On this. Great. That's great. Are there any other? So I think goals for uh a um, strategic planning session. Are people more interested in ironing out a work plan than, shall we say, ironing out what goals we'll attend to? I, it just seems like there's an awful lot here and there are only so many of us, so we could potentially um, use some facilitation help to uh, do some sort of advanced prioritization, shall we say? Mm -hmm. and to um, consider whether there are any other goals that we want to add to the list at that time. Is there anything that needs to be ironed out today, Jane? Uh, no, well, the only thing I wanted to see ironed out today, but I think we're dealing with the natural cover group independently of this. Yeah. Um, but I would say that there's a need to sort of take, this was very much done as a catch as catch can um, at, the, at the last meeting. And so I think there's a need to sort of look at these just organize them into some common themes. And from that, there may be a natural evolution of some working groups. Um, and I think the key thing will be to give Kathy and Paulina an opportunity to say yay or nay, or, or you know, we think you're missing this or we think you're missing that. Um, we want to give them a chance to flag issues uh, against Fresh this eye. Yeah, fresh eyes. Um, but I, I think that facilitation could help us sort of get to not only organizing it into themes, getting to a work plan, and then from that also identifying potential um, working groups. Great. I, I, Angus. Yes, uh, I think we should also bring in um, the note that Jane made, the... Uh, the notes from the community conversations, uh, because that's really uh, what the public thinks. Yeah. Um, some of it does overlap with our ideas, uh, but much of it is, I, I won't say it's new to us, but it's certainly new to uh, what we put together. And, and I think if we could tie the two together um, and agree. have a facilitator go through the two sections, bring them together and work on that. Um, it would A, save us a lot of work, uh, B, recognize what the public really feels about certain yeah. issues and C, make our task uh, a little bit easier. Jane, would you describe a little bit more about what that was just in case anyone isn't clear? Well, basically, um, it was Strategy Core was is the um, consulting group that's been working with the municipality to sort of identify, and this has been going on, I think, beyond even the prior council, um, but taking it back to say, what should the seven key priorities be, or this up till now, there's been seven identified. And Strategy Core, to, and that was basically by the initial process was, I guess, to consult councillors, to consult staff, other sort of key parties um, as to what they thought the priorities for for uh, the municipality should be, strategic priorities. Then the final stage of that, which flowed over into this year, was Stratpor, the consultants going out. And they had one which was sort of a broad session at Wellington. Uh, arena saying, you know, asking, you know, everyone come, come one, come all to provide some input, working with the strategy core facilitator. And then this, these were sessions that were held 
also working with the, the county foundation um, to look at, okay, here are the themes and to find other ways to keep, keep partners in the community. Here's your opportunity for input. Here's your opportunity to speak to this and set some priorities. But the main goal of this is, is to create two-way community engagement. And so it's not just top down, it is seeking the grassroots input on where these priorities should be. I hope that's Excellent. what you were thinking. Does anyone of. want to look for further? Yes. Does anyone want to look for further clarification, particularly our new members? By the way, our new members, anytime you want to bust in and say, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. Please feel yeah. free to do that. Um, the returning members of the group, I think I, I speak for all of us. We want to support you as best we can and uh, and want you to get the best leg up uh, because we know we've got sort of all the sort of background in our pocket and we want to share that and make sure that uh, that there's um, that you have no barriers. My demon was always wanting to yell out UNA, UNA in meetings, which is an acronym for use no acronyms. Because <laughs> every everybody tends to get into their FCM, PCP, and, and that alphabet soup drove me around the bend for a while. So so please do just bust in and yeah. say, what are you talking about? Uh, so, so Catalina is... Is is the goal of the committee fairly clear? Okay, so can we go ahead unless there's, yes, go ahead. I, I do wanna add that on April 11th at that council meeting, there is going to be a presentation from the consultant oh, uh, from Strategy Corps who, who led the community conversations for the, the plan. So I'm happy to send the community plan link to all the members following the meeting and you can catch up. And then make sure that um, you watch the the meeting April eleventh, and then of course your counselors can provide you an update on on how that went. And then there's still time for the EAC to be able to uh, provide your input uh, through your counselors as council shapes the strategic plan and what those priorities are going to be. That's terrific. Thank you, Catalina. Uh, and and. We'll, they usually prepare very good um, slides for people with lots of colored graphs and visuals, which is always pretty, um, but also uh, very informative. So, um, so certainly we can share that agenda when it comes out, John and I, I think. Um, so can I get a mover and a seconder? Thanks, Angus. Oh no, Angus has a question or a comment. Just unmuting. No, uh, it's a, a comment. Um, I know that when something from the Environmental Advisory Committee goes before uh, council and we're asking for something, uh, there's going to be a question of how much is it going to cost and where is the money going to come from? Um, if we can come up with uh, a round figure uh, for a strategy session. Um, it would be useful in quieting some council voices. Uh, so because this is staff time, like probably existing staff time, um, I, I think it's something that um, would probably, although of course that that does you know, in that stuff time, it's very valuable. Uh, I think possibly it, it might be something that's quite supportable. Um, and there are uh, alternatives if indeed uh, this is not supported. Uh, there are certainly alternatives because last year we had an offer from a member of the community who does this as a living, who offered to do this again. So maybe at that point in time, if we weren't able to um, to do this through staff, we could look for um, outside assistance. But I think uh, I think our CAO would prefer that it was done in house, and I think our clerks would prefer that it was done in house. So. Uh, um, 
you know, uh, for now, let's, I hope, focus on, focus on this and hope it goes forward and has full support. John? Thanks. Yes, I think Angus does make a good point. So we, what we need to say to uh, to that that eventual question when it comes to council is that it won't cost any cash. That we're looking for essentially in kind contribution from staff, and if Marcy is going to support that, that's great. Uh, I think ah. you were thinking of Julianne Sneps. She'd be great. And failing that, the uh, the former councillor from Wellington might be uh, might be a very useful guy. He was the offerer. <laughs> He was begging. Um, so the, we could look to include language in the motion that the Environmental Advisory Committee requests council approval for in-kind staff support. Is that language that people would like to include? Or do we find that necessary? Rachel. Uh, I think that's good language to include. And if we do have plans to have community type events in the future, uh, maybe in-kind use of facilities and not just staff time could be good. So for this, just for this item, yes, when we go and look at the, at the, um, at the, uh, um, the terms of reference, when we go to do strategic, um, strategic planning, let's look at the term of reference and see if we can look for um, building something into that. Uh, so I, I think that might be where to where to put that uh, or to do or to create its own item and put it on a future agenda. Um, but for this one, I would think let's let's just look at how we best move this forward so that council understand what we're looking for. What do people want to do? Do we want to change this motion to include in kind or do you want to just leave it up to Councillor Hirsch and myself to um, inform at the meeting? I think any, any preferences? No? Not so much, so we'll just leave it as is, but we'll take that note forward and try to clarify. Okay. Okay, so let's do that that way. So can I get someone to move uh, item 11.2 to uh, to receive this discussion and then to look for council approval for staff support to facilitate our planning? Rachel and John, thank you. All in favor? I should be asking Paulina to, yep. to yay your nay. Thank you. <laughs> yay. <laughs> yay. I, I guess actually, Paulina, if you have any strong objections, just yell out nay. Um, Definitely. Might be <laughs> the easiest. So let's move on to, uh, so everyone's favorite topic. So natural cover <laughs> and um so we've got uh we've got a terms of reference already and a natural uh to to reestablish the natural cover working group we have um members uh pre of the pre-existing group and uh we have um uh the terms of reference in, uh, that we can look at close more closely when we do strategic planning for other working groups and for this working group. But let right now let's just open the discussion on um, on whether people are uh, are in agreement that we should be looking to, in short order, establish the natural working working cover work work. Um, working groups so that we can let them get to work this spring before planting season <laughs> yes. starts. Yes. yes, John, you've got your hand up. Or do you just mean yes, please let's nope. get thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Well, of course, the working group has never stopped working. They just they, they just ignored all these time frames. And <laughs> and we and we and we kept meeting unofficially. Um I just wanted to say that that I'm fine with all these motions. Um, um I, you know, the the relatively new concept, I guess, of, of advertising publicly for uh, members or more members is interesting and and maybe we'll scare up some more good people, but there's already quite a core of folks who uh, participate in this and want to continue. 
Uh, and I would just note, um, if if you've looked at the at the link for the draft um, natural cover working group, in terms of reference, Catalina has highlighted uh, two uh, of the sections from the old one that I think Catalina can simply be deleted. They're no longer necessary. Um, and that would simplify uh, completing that text. So both of those things that you highlighted, just knock them off. And, and those were um, the ones in reference to the ad hoc tree policy yeah, that is now complete? That's ancient history. And and um, so with that, I would say that terms of reference would be fine, my opinion anyway. And, um, and we can get on with um, approving that text then and um, uh, getting the National Cover Working Group recruitment started. So now, would anyone like to, uh, so John, do you know if any of the members of the, who are, are specifically definitely hoping to return? <laughs> or can we send an invitation to them directly to invite them to return uh, as returning members? Is that something that we have capacity to do? Well, I mean, I mean, they all want to return. There's not a single right. person who's, uh, that's not true. Uh, Ashley uh -huh. um, Anastasio is moving away from the county, so she's uh, uh -huh. bowed out. But uh, okay. other than that, they all want to come back. I don't know, Catalina, do we need to send invites or just draw the advertisement to their attention? Um, either way. Through the chair, our process in the past has been to connect with previous members and draw their attention to the advertisement and ask them to just officially apply again. Great. Or just state their interest. Yeah. yeah. So now are there members of this group that would like to, so we've got uh, part of the motion is that the natural, uh, the environmental advisory working, the environmental advisory committee appoint blank and blank to the natural cover working group. Do we have any victims who want to uh, who want to go forward, who have the commitment to live the dream. So John, is that something that you're still interested in undertaking? Oh sure, I'll, I'll, um, I'll certainly do that. And is there anyone else who would like to join that group? As a, as a committee member, I mean that would be useful. Um, yeah, especially since maybe I can't, uh, you know, always do it. I should just note for the new folks uh, or those who aren't aware, uh, this this is this started really with the former um, uh, tree policy ad hoc committee. So these are the folks who want us to plant as many trees as possible, um, get into naturalized uh, yards and and you know everything to do with natural cover, increase the tree canopy of the county. Of course, the Emerald Ash Borer is dealing with that in a very negative sense. Most recently, yeah. it's appalling what's going on. But, you know, we've got to work. Um, I know Albert's still with us. I don't know if he has any information yet on how many ash trees on county property we've lost. I know they're doing a count. But um, this is all about trees, natural cover, and so on. And, hey, there's Albert. Maybe he can tell us something. Yeah, I, I don't think at this stage we have an exact number, or if the number we do have, uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be appropriate for the whole county. Really, all we've completed so far is an assessment of ash trees within settlement areas, um, and some of the major thoroughfare, thoroughfares, like major uh, roadways. But the uh, assessment for these trees in, on public property continues. There's still work to be done. It's ongoing. In fact, uh, I was out doing some of this last week, <laughs> so it it, uh, it continues. We're hoping to present the results you, of that. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, so you, but you must be into hundreds already. Oh yes, yeah, there's yeah. quite a number of them. Yeah, and and never mind public land. If you look at the whole county, we're into tens of thousands. There's no question. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. And these so, are tremendously enthusiastic folks, Lise Bois and uh, Susan Banks and so on. Yes, the more we can coax back, I'm sure when that uh, when that invitation goes out to the public, the the better. Um, Paulina, this is a group that even if you don't, uh, if you're not interested in joining the group, you might uh, be interested in attending to discuss with them. 
um, what their long-term plans are, what their hopes and dreams are for natural cover in the county, for funding natural cover in the county, and for um, moving several bylaw targets potentially for tree protection forward. So it might be a great group for you to connect with on some level. Um, great, thank you. Um, I, I do know Lise, um, and yeah, I was just about to jump in. I'd be happy to join. And, uh, I think that would be great. I think that would be great. Um, wonderful. So uh, is anyone else interested as well? Because uh, as long as we don't hit quorum, um, anyone is welcome to to join that group from the committee. Uh, and also, even if you don't join that group, I, I think they'll have a fairly, whenever it's reconstituted, we'll have a fairly open door policy so that people can go and connect with them as they like. Uh, so what I'm hearing right now is that that motion, that uh, clause in that motion is going to read that the Environmental Advisory Committee appoint John Hirsch and Paulina Schlatzka. How do I pronounce your last name? Oh, that was perfect. Oh, thank you. Nice. Um, to the Natural Cover Working Group. Uh, all good with that, Catalina? Yep, that's perfect. Awesome. So any further comment on the rest of this motion? Any further questions or clarifications? Okay, let's go. Who wants to put this on the floor? Rachel and John, thank you. All in favor? And that period. Yep. That's a great motion. Uh, so next item 11.4, discussion on planning bylaws, studies of interest to the Environmental Advisory Committee um, that we uh, invite Mike Michaud, who's the manager of planning to talk about several different planning uh, bylaws and studies that are upcoming. Um, we've got many, if anyone, would like to talk about the ones that we've got coming on the committee or if any members of the committee have questions or clarifications that they would like to um to put forward now's your chance no are people in agreement that we would like mike michaud to come and and talk us through several of those yes so john is your hand up for a comment or is your okay go for it Thanks. Um, yeah, just briefly, so because some folks may be unaware, uh, several of the things that we came across as a committee in the last several years uh, caused us to want uh, county staff to uh, create some more bylaws. So a complete application bylaw, mm -hmm. and that's from a planning standpoint. Uh, what we found um, in reviewing planning proposals for um, major developments in an environmentally sensitive area was that there was a seemed to be a complete lack of understanding as to what really was needed to say that you had a complete application. Yeah. And proponents typically just don't get their studies done or the studies are not done well. And, and we found ourselves commenting on stuff that we shouldn't have had to comment on, but uh, pointing out weaknesses. So the upshot of that is in our new official plan, there was a requirement, an absolute requirement, that the county implement a, um, a complete uh, planning application bylaw, which specifies in some detail what is required before an application actually gets accepted as complete and can go through the process. And in fact, uh, this committee, mostly Angus and uh, Jeff Bernigas, did some work on detailing what that should be. So we need Mike Michaud to come back and, and uh, see where that's at. Um, as noted here, the zone, the entire comprehensive zoning bylaw is being updated um, to match the new official plan. So that's a project that um, I'm sure the EAC is going to want to be involved in. And um, ongoing work on um, a site alteration bylaw, mm -hmm. which is going to incorporate um, the concept of trees and when they can and cannot be cut down. So it may shock some of you to know that we don't have a site alteration bylaw in the county. Mm. So right now you can 
dig big holes in your property. You can cut down all the trees in your property. You can do all kinds of nasty things and, and alter the site with no permission whatsoever. You only need permissions for development, like building. So most communities have a site alteration bylaw that says you can do this, you can do that, you need a permit to do this, whatever. And of course, our target is you know trees and streams and things like that. So that's another thing that planning is working on is a site alteration bylaw. And, um, and that should be met with the great consternation and interest, hopefully, uh, especially in the farming community who generally think that we should have no power to tell them what to do at all. Anyway, not to get ahead of it, that's the kind of stuff that we want Mike to talk about. So I guess um, I just need to ask, I guess May 16th is our next meeting. We're not having an April meeting. We did talk about four not being enough. I'm in favor well, of Well, I mean, that's our next discussion is next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if Mike's lined up for the 16th, that's fine. Sorry, John. Sorry, if Mike Sorry, is lined John. up for the 16th, if, if he's lined up for the 16th of May, that's that's fine. Sorry, John, I think I froze for a second there. And uh, but when we discuss next meeting date, we can certainly choose uh, choose to have an April meeting. Mm -hmm. So and that's item 12. So when we get to that point, and I, I suspect that the clerk is anticipating that we're going to do exactly that when we get to item 12, that we're going to be discussing potentially having a meeting before then. Yes, Jane. Yeah, the other thing is uh, certainly, I mean, John, what you've just outlined certainly indicates that we're going to be looking to reconstitute the planning working group. Yeah. Um, but uh, the other, because there's a lot to be looking at in, in some detail. The other aspect here is the Partners for Climate Protection PCP program under the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Somewhere along the way, I had read or seen something that suggested we were getting near the first of the five uh, milestones. And I think Aaron McNichol, um, the Director of Corporate and Legislative Affairs has the mandate for that. Um, so I'm, in terms of getting into discussions about other presentations or upcoming meetings, I was hoping that we could ask Aaron to provide us with an update on this where things stand with the CPC and what he, you know, what help and support the committee can provide to him in that process. So excellent question. And that's something he's anticipating coming to talk to us at some point. And I think the clerk possibly has actually already maybe done some scheduling. Uh, and Yay. I, would you like to comment on that? Uh, certainly through you, Madam Chair, uh, Aaron, our Director of Corporate and Legislative Services, is really excited and looking forward to coming to the committee. He anticipated the need to talk to all of you and give you an update on uh, the work that's been completed thus far and get your feedback on future activities planned. So he is actually scheduled for the May meeting. So um, if we do end up switching if we do end up looking to do planning in April, is that something that he'd be able to accommodate potentially depending on the date? Do, potentially. potentially, definitely. I, I think the motion is written with that flexibility because planning is extremely busy and understaffed and we wanna give Michael Michaud the flexibility to choose if May works better for him or if April works better for him. And same with Aaron. Um, Catalina, do you, you don't require a motion for Aaron McNichol. That's already sort of underway, is it not? Okay, mm -hmm. good. Um, Angus, I believe you had your hand up. Yes. Uh, again, this is um, for when Michael Michaud comes. Uh, I think it would be useful for the committee as a whole to get a brief overview on uh, how Bill 23 affects planning. Uh, what rights has it taken away from the municipalities and what is planning uh, trying to do about it? So if, uh, if Michael could get the heads up on that 
and then give us a, a very brief overview on uh, how bad or how good Bill 23 is. Catalina, would you like us to um, amend the motion to include such language, or are you happy to pass that on? For you, Madam Chair, I've included it in the minutes, um, and we'll make him aware of that. Great. I think it's an, an item of interest to Mike, and I think it's something he's going to want to talk about. Uh, Rachel, I did see your thumb up at one point. Was that to look to speak, or was that to just agree with whatever was agreeable? It was my virtual head nod. It was your virtual head nod. Well, we appreciate those. Thank you. Um, further questions, comments? No. I have one uh, amendment to um, to put forward, which would be to strike May 16th and put in first available um, meeting or something to that effect um, or uh, to... A subsequent, I don't want it to be pushed beyond May, but uh, Catalina, is there a way that we can include flexible language instead of May 16th? We could say as soon as feasible. Is that comfortable for members of the committee? Angus? Okay. Uh, but okay. with, with your mic? As soon as feasible might be August. Um, why don't we say the <laughs> April? Why don't we say the April or May meeting? Very good. Can we do that, Catalina? Thank you. That's excellent, Angus. And you've got the head nod from Rachel, so you're winning. <laughs> um, Catalina, does that sound good? Yeah. Can that be taken as uh, an easy amendment, or would you like us to vote on that? Friendly is good. There we go. So uh, for their comments or questions or concerns or clarifications, a lot of alliteration. No, let's let's go ahead. Did we put this on the floor? Has someone moved this yet? Can I uh, get someone to move this, please? Jane and Kathy. So all in favor? Yep. Great. So, uh, John and Paulina, congratulations. You are now members of the Environmental Advisory Committee's Natural Working, Natural Cover Working Group. And uh, John, if you could give a heads up to the group that uh, that there'll be a recruitment, and we're expecting every name to be resubmitted, except for, of course, Ashley. Um, so, uh, oh, so that that was going back in time, pardon me. Now that was um, Michael Michaud that we're gonna be inviting him, pardon me, I'm like jumping around. So, uh, and we'll look forward to him whenever possible. Catalina, um, here's here's the, the next item that you're dreading possibly, which is next meeting date. So, um, <laughs> Is that date is in April available for you? And 12th. while we're sorry, twelfth. Say again. The twelfth, twelfth of April. Uh, I thought you were saying Guelph, and I was going to say yes. They've got some very fine environmental work, but why are you bringing <laughs> it up? So the twelfth. Um, so while we're on the topic, is. Uh, are Tuesdays of four still a good time and good day for people? Do they do they work? Yeah, uh, Rachel. My uh, only limitation currently is my one year old usually goes to bed between six thirty and seven because we're up at five. So good. Yeah. So we should aim to have meetings that are done by six every single time. Yeah, if if we could, yeah. <laughs> if we could. Um, okay, great. So that is good to note. Um, so it looks like we're good to go ahead. Catalina, can staff accommodate April 12th? So in looking at the meeting schedule, if we want to follow the Tuesday at four, but we have council, would you be open to the 18th 
it gives a bit more time because the 12th is pretty soon after this meeting. Mm -hmm. So if we have that extra week, I think it would be really helpful. So could it be the 18th at How do four people... o'clock? April 18th at four o'clock. I see a lot of head nods. Yep. Uh, and and a thumbs up. And Paulina, is that good yes. for you too? Yes, thank you. Okay, I think that's a yes, Catalina. So um so next meeting date would be April 18th. Is it it depending on what council deems, would we be able to undertake our strategic work planning at that time? Perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. Definitely. We'll okay. work as, as hard as we can when council makes a decision on that motion. Great. Thank you very much. Now, do you need a motion to change that date from May 16th? Great. Thank you. So that takes us to adjournment and we're out of here so, before six, which is a sorry. miracle. Yeah, Just to be clear, <laughs> we're keeping, we're adding April 18th and we're keeping May 16th, right? Okay. So of course. Two. Okay. Yeah. Great. Adjournment, sorry. No, that's fine. And Catalina, uh, just looking around at a bunch of keeners, I would anticipate a monthly meeting. <laughs> For sure. Particularly the list we've got. <laughs> Let's talk about it again in April. Okay. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, Catalina. <laughs> <laughs> we, met, we did miss you guys for sure. <laughs> well, good. We missed you too. Um, well, I see you all the time. Yeah. <laughs> You don't get to miss me, uh, but this is, this is the best. So now, Kat, Catalina, before we adjourn, um, we are going to be getting a new committee clerk soon. Are you going to hand over the reins probably in advance of April or will that be? Uh, I'll definitely be joining her for the April 18th meeting, but she'll take the lead and then the official handoff. Yeah, after that first meeting, they'll be good to go. Very exciting. It's, it's Announcement a she? coming soon. It's a she. It's a she. <laughs> Little clues. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, when's that announcement coming up? This week. Great. So motion to adjourn. Can someone put this on the floor? Sure. Motion to adjourn at, and what time is it? At 5.53? Mm -hmm. John and Rachel. So all in favor, I yeah. guess we're adjourned. Thank you, you so much, guys. Kathy and Paulina. Thank you so much, Jillian. It's so great to see you back. And Albert and Adam, of course. Adam, I'm sorry we didn't introduce you quickly enough um, when we had you on screen for 10 seconds. Thanks, Thanks Albert. Bud. Thanks, Catalina. Thank you all. <laughs>